Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Soul, praise him for he is thy health and salvation. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. And the things of earth will grow strange. is very near. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. Soon and very soon, we are going Be 
beyond the galaxy. You are holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Your love never fails and never gives up. Starting at verse 1. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted in rivers of living water that bringeth fruit in forth bring forth his oh, let me start again that bring forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth uh will shall prosper and i will turn service over the hands of bishop Bodie. praise god thank god for that powerful scripture reading amen psalm one amen very powerful and always applicable for whatever we're going through. Uh, Minister Ham, praise God. You take us to the throne praise of grace. God. Yes, sir. To God be the glory. Dear Father God, we just thank you for the victory in Jesus. And we thank you for being our awesome God. We thank you for this glorious Sunday. We come before you with hearts of gratitude and praise. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this new day and the opportunity to worship you. Thank you for the privilege we have each week to gather as a body of believers. Thank you for calling us into dialogue with you, Lord. Thank you for speaking your words of life to us. Help us to respond with praise, gratitude, and obedience. Father, help us to be renewed in you this day and every day as we worship you, that we may live lives that please you in every way, Lord, and that the light of Jesus may shine brightly in our homes, in our workplaces, in our communities, and anywhere, Lord, that you send us. 
Father God, allow our light to shine so people see the you that's in us. We pray that your Holy Spirit be present during this service. May our worship be such that those that are in the midst and those that hear this message later who do not yet know you, Jesus, will be moved to declare God is really among us and ask what must we do to be saved. Today, Father God, we ask a special blessing for those that have worked diligently behind the scenes and helping to prepare for each of these Sunday services. Without that work, this Zoom service may not be able to be expertly occurring. Cover them with blessings and protection this and every week. I pray for the pastor as he preaches, work in him and through him, Lord. Speak straight into our hearts with nothing less than the convicting, motivating, and life-transforming power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Help me, Lord, and help all of us, Lord, to be not only hearers of your word, but doers as well. Dear Father, as we prepare for the celebration of Jesus' birth, we ask a special blessing on our youth and children this week. Father, be close to each child and surround them with your favor as with a shield. We pray that you protect them in all ways. And they're going out and in their coming in. Guard them against diseases of the mind and body, accidents, predators, and every kind of evil and evil doers, Lord. Please allow them to grow up to be the men and women of God you have called them to be and allow them to bear much fruit in ministry that brings honor and glory to your name. Father, we also ask that you give us strength for every battle, wisdom for every decision, restoration for things taken, and peace that surpasses all understanding to know that you are in control, Father God, and that all things work together for your good and for those that love you, Lord. Father, we pray that your name be lifted high in our worship and praise to you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. For a wonderful prayer. Amen. Mr. Ham, Evangelist Bodie, thank you for all your, your tireless work on behalf of the Lord and you know, just for being a saints of God that you truly are and demonstrating your commitment uh, to the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you, this is um, it's certainly a joy and a privilege and an opportunity to be around such talented, gifted people that care about the things of God. We see we're in a world now that is clearly not at peace and man's peace can never uh, compared to God's peace. And, and so uh, we, we just thank God for all of you today that are on you know, this Zoom call. I um, want to ask that, you know, be be in prayer. So some of us have a, a procedure. I've got a procedure to go through this week. So be in much prayer for me as we take care of that this week. Uh, in fact, tomorrow. Uh, so trust the Lord to operate with those uh, medical professionals. Because one thing I believe in saints is that yes, man has technical knowledge and, and what have you and is skilled in different things, especially in the medical profession, but it works so much better when we pray and make sure the Lord is in their hearts and minds and in their hands when they're doing, uh, working on us, when they're operating on us and doing things. So Truly, we're still going to always give God the, the, the thanksgiving and, you know, thank him for everything, even if he's working through uh, a physical human being. And I think all of you understand what I'm saying, that, yes, it's still, God still does miracles and everything, but many times he works through uh, human beings to, to do miraculous things. And so even in the medical profession, when we go through procedures and whatnot, still we need to have God in the mix, amen? I know we believe in praying over our food every time we eat. Y'all do pray over your food, don't you? Uh-oh. Amen. Okay. Amen. I was wondering. 
<laughs> but so yeah. th same thing, Minister in Advance that yeah, we we pray over any circumstance we get into, anything we're getting involved in, and especially when we uh, you know, dealing with medical procedures and whatnot, no matter how minor or major, because uh, anytime the human body, you know, is being worked on by an external force. Uh, still, the Lord needs to, you know, be in the mix there because uh, man can make errors and mistakes, but we trust that uh, God can keep man on the right, correct path to do the right things that he's supposed to do, even in the medical profession. So we yeah, thank you. May, may I pray Amen. now? Please. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, dear Father God, yes, we know that you're the source of our very life in whom we live and move and have our being. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us at all times and in all circumstances. Yes. We come now confident that everything that we ask, that you are still with us in all things and you work for the good of those who love you. And Father God, our, we come now before you and we ask that you be with Pastor Bodie as he undergoes surgery. Guide all those who will be working on him. May their minds and hands be an instrument to your good and to your glory, Lord. We thank you for the anesthesiologists, for the skilled physicians, for yes. every medical um, advance that we have. Um, more than all these, we thank you for your presence with him, Lord, during this surgery and for your great power, power to raise us up, power to provide it for every need that he'll have during that surgery, power to make him whole, Father God. Father God, we ask your blessing today for strength and health and peace, ease their distress and calm their minds and their spirits. We ask, Lord Jesus, just like you calmed this in the storms of Galilee, Lord, we ask that you bring quiet and calm to the entire Bodie family. For yes. Pastor Bodie is in your hands, Lord. And we know, Father God, that you will hold him close to your bosom and allow him to come through the surgery safely. Father God, for you said you're no respecter of persons. You're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And Father God, if you have brought others through these surgeries, you will bring him through too. And we give you thanks in advance for him, Father God. And so, Father, grant peace and calm as we trust uh, completely in you, Father God, in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Mr. Ham for that fervent prayer. Amen. And just amen. keep us through and amen. And I just thank God that uh, he's going to do it and that we're all touching and agreeing. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Um, Saints want to just share a little scripture. Well, not a little scripture, but a, a passage in the Old Testament because I, I, there's no such thing as a little scripture. I'll just say it this way. That, I just want to share a passage with you. In the Old Testament, um, if you would turn with me to Exodus, the 14th chapter, Exodus, the 14th chapter, amen. And we see here, I want to start at the 10th verse. All right, Exodus 14. Oh, let me, I'm sorry, I'm not on. Yeah, oh, I see my video looks kind of dark. Uh, my camera appears to be running dark here today. But anyway, I think you can still see me. If not, I'll just go off camera. Oh, uh, that's we uh, can see you. You can see me. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So Exodus 14, chapter 10, verse says, and when Pharaoh drew nigh. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not 
this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Now, here's what I want to get to my main verse. 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again never no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, the point today, saints, is this. The children of Israel were glad to be delivered when, when finally Pharaoh set them free and there was a, a lot of joy in the land. They were going to leave. They had been in slavery and servitude down there. And they were ready to go. Now, before they got out of there, they went through some, you know, the story about Moses and Pharaoh. You know, the story about all the plagues he brought about. And even there were some complaints where the people were saying, leave us alone. We don't really, you know, every time you try to go before Pharaoh, things get worse. Things get worse. And it seems today, sometimes you have a lot of naysayers. When you trust God, you believe God, there's always going to be those naysayers come along and say, well, I don't see any evidence. Or do you really, did you really hear from the Lord? Did the Lord really tell you this? Are you really trusting God? So you're going to hear what I call the naysayers. And so the children of Israel were experiencing this. All the great things Moses had done, still to Pharaoh, they still got mad. And you look back up there in the 10th verse, they would say, hey, Moses, what you got us out here. Wouldn't it have been better for us to stay back in Egypt? At least we knew what we were doing there. We, and that's what they're saying. We know about the mean, hateful things we're going through there. It'd be better to go through that than to be out here in this wilderness and to get cut down by uh, uh, Pharaoh and his army. But the point is this, saints. Sometimes when things don't look so good or it seems like, uh, I'll say it this way, just before you're really about to have a bountiful blessing or things about to really work in a different direction in your life, there's a storm that arises. Hmm. Song of the Saints, you sing that there's a storm out over the, this ocean and it's moving this old way. If your soul's now anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. That's the old song that people sung down through the years. And the Egyptians represent the storm that was coming out toward the children of Israel. They had escaped captivity. They were going on to a better life. They were God's chosen people. But yet their hearts got weakened when they saw the storm, the storm of chariots, of warriors, trained military people that were out there now. And not only that, they were coming for them. And get this, they were hemmed up against a river, a sea, a body of water that they had no ships, they had no boats, anything to cross. They were hemmed up. So the situation looked bleak. And they began to say, well, Moses, why did you get us out here like this? Would it have been better that we stay in Egypt? At least there were graves we could be buried in. Now you're going to get us out here. We're going to get slaughtered by these Egyptians. Why did you do this? Now, no, it was God's will that they were to get out there and uh, get set free. However, saints of God, I want to tell you, be careful about the storm. When you see the storm coming or you see some kind of dark clouds, fear not. Fear not. I, I, we've been talking on this periodically lately, but I'm bringing it up again today. Fear not. The peace of God, you have the peace of God, which is better than any peace that man can give you. Just remember who you are and whose you are. Look, Moses told the people, says, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, that stand still to me means, wait a minute, don't get happy feet, 
Don't start running away. Don't start uh, getting out of the will of God. Don't start and doing something and trying to help God be God. No, you let God be God. You do your part, do your role, which is to be the best child of God you can be, to operate in faith, to make sure your spirit is connected with God's spirit, which means you have to have the Holy Spirit. You be the best child of God, the saint of God. You be, let God handle the details. Let God work it all out. Song we sing that Jesus can't work it out. That problem that I have. Oh, yes, by the way, we all face problems. Our families face problems. Let Jesus work it out. That's the most important thing. Let Jesus work it out. And so we see here, Moses said, fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, don't run. Don't lose heart. You see, the people bucking against Moses here, they had lost heart. The biggest problem we can have when we're involved in things of God is we let our spirit, man, collapse and we let the devil trouble us and we forget that, wait a minute, I don't have to be troubled. As I heard Ms. Ann pray earlier about the peace of God, if I remember, I had the peace of God that passes all the understanding. Man, listen, I could be fine. I could be okay. I'm good. Let me operate in the peace of God. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No one can pluck me out of the hands of God. I have to remember that. Operate that way. Moses told him, said, fear you not, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians who you've seen today, you will not see them ever again. No, this little subtle point I want to bring out. To encourage you. You may not see those Egyptians. But he didn't say you wouldn't see any issues in the future, any problems. You see the bigger point, saints? Those particular Egyptians you won't see today because the Lord's going to deal with that. My point is this. As we go through the trials and tribulations, as we be about our father's business, recognize this. That situation or that temptation or that ordeal that you went through that's going to pass. But keep in mind, there'll be other tests. There'll be other deals or ordeals. But guess what? Greater is he that's in you, that's in the world. You have everything you need to go through and be a conqueror. In fact, more than a conqueror. In fact, you're joined in with Jesus Christ, which means you have everything, all the power that you need to have to conquer, to overcome, uh, to be a witness for Christ, to let people know that, yes, Christ still in the saving business. Uh, stand still, fear ye not. These Egyptians, you're not going to see anymore. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. The preaching here tell stand still because they were ready to run, take off. They were murmuring and complaining. These things happen when you don't get settled in the peace of God. The peace of God settles you down. Stand still and operate with the peace of God. Stand still. Let the anointing take place. Stand still. Let the perfect will of God take place in your life. Stand still. Don't get happy feet. Run off. Run ahead of them. Uh, a lot of times when people don't know what to do, they just run everywhere. They just run them up. What the Lord is saying here, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. You saw the storm coming. You saw them over the horizon. You saw these chariots coming at you with these warriors. And yet, he's telling you, stand still now and see the salvation. Now, look at what God's going to accomplish for you today. You're not going to see these Egyptians anymore. But he didn't say there wouldn't be other issues. Just want to let you know, saints, that you won't see these Egyptians. You've gotten through this. You, you're conquering this. You're going to conquer what you have to conquer. But take note, there will be other challenges, but those two will pass. If you take the position that I'm up for every challenge, I'm up for every, not only challenge, but look at the challenge also as an opportunity to demonstrate what God is doing. It's an opportunity to show that, yes, I can overcome that I can be tempted 
and still pass with flying colors. You know, when I was uh, still uh, teaching over at the high school, I would say students, um, a quiz or exam is an opportunity. Now, you know, most of us don't like to take examinations, quiz, or whatever assessment, I'll call it, if you want to, you know, however you got to face it. We don't like assessments. But look at it this way. Every test, quiz, assessment is an opportunity to demonstrate that I know the material. It's an opportunity to demonstrate that, well, I can show Mr. Bodie that I know how to solve this equation. I know how to handle this, uh, this geometry assignment, this algebra assignment, whatever the case. I can demonstrate I know this, so I can look forward to Mr. Bodie giving me an A. I was a fair teacher. You demonstrate. You're an A student. You get an A. You demonstrate whatever. And I, I, I'll i say this uh, to those of you on the call. I was probably also a little softer and kinder in understanding that if you gave good effort and tried and you gave me your very best, still, you got good grades for that. Just give me your very best. And I knew that you did the best. I was still going to. Uh, reward you with a good grade if you did your now you had to do your very best you had to show your very best now you, and you couldn't be disrespectful and you know all the chatter we hear today but if you said listen I did my very best I want to show you I'm doing my very best then yeah you will get a great grade you get a good grade whatever the case may be and so I used to encourage that don't run away don't be afraid of tests and assessments and quizzes because an opportunity to demonstrate that you have what you have, that you got what you need. Now, having said that, Moses told him, says, just stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. All right? You're not going to see these no more. But they're going to get dealt with. But part two is that, well, there may be some future issues you'll have to run across. But right now, God is right now an on-time God. We're going to deal with these right here, right now. And you know the rest of the story. Moses dealt with them. And in fact, interesting point, before I move to my next scripture, where the, most, the Lord told him, Moses told him, 14 verses, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Uh, the Lord told Moses, said, now, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel, go forward lift up your rod, so forth. He told Moses, you already have within you to deal with these Egyptians. That's a whole nother lesson, that we already have what we need in Christ Jesus. We already have a Savior. We already have what we need. We have the tools of faith to get things done for the Lord. Isn't that awesome? We serve an awesome God. He's given us a awesome responsibility. He's given us awesome tools to carry out this awesome responsibility. And note, some of you that know me, I only use awesome when I'm talking about the things of God. I don't. I reserve awesome for the things of God only. Nothing that man does is awesome. Only the things, at least that's, that's my, my take. Everybody's got their own way of looking at things, but only God is awesome to me. And finally, I want to encourage you. Another scripture I want to share with you along this uh, having peace, not being afraid. Amen. And, and Minister Ham actually touched on this in prayer. Amen. <clears throat> and if we go to uh, Philippians uh, four chapter. Amen. One of the things is, um, I really, one of the things I really like about the books that Paul wrote, they were excellent, excellent, excellent uh, advice for daily living. And if you think about how Paul was anointed to speak to the Gentiles, Peter to the Jews, and then Paul to the Gentiles, that all these books, Philippians, Corinthians, all of them, a great example for us to follow even in this 21st century. Amen. Even in this 21st century. Praise God. And as I looked in this, I was reading 
the sixth chapter, Philippians 4, 6. Amen. Philippians 4, 6. Let me start off at the uh, <clears throat> fourth verse. I got the New King James Version. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Well, that rejoice can only come <laughs> when you have that perfect peace. You can't rejoice if you're not at peace. You see, you have to be <clears throat> in peace to rejoice. Uh, you have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord to rejoice. You can't rejoice if you're running all over the place like a chicken with your head cut off. You have to stand still. You have to be steadfast, unmovable in the Lord, in the Lord. Then you're able to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, which is related to Psalm 37, 4. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee desires of heart. Uh-huh. That's when you have that peace. He says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Sixth verse. Love this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request to God be known. Right there. By prayer and supplication and thanks with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In other words, your prayer, your giving honor, glory, your worship to God. You know, we're not Thanksgiving season, but the most important Thanksgiving is the Thanksgiving we give to God. Amen. Not necessarily because what uh, happened, you know, the first Thanksgiving here in the United States, I guess, with the Indians and the pilgrims and all that. And those traditions came down the line. But most important Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving to God. Amen. And and the main mm -hmm. verse I'm going to get to here, and she alluded to this in the prayer. Thank you so much, Minister Ham. You said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's it right there. The peace of God. The peace of God will guard your hearts. You see, the children of Israel saw terror and their hearts were troubled. But if you get the peace of God, and we have an especially wonderful advantage today, I'll admit that they didn't have, we have the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit that gives us the peace of God. Oh, the Holy Spirit, uh, some of us is called the Holy Ghost, amen. We have the opportunity to receive the Holy Ghost that gives us that. In fact, look quickly at John 14, 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. This is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, huh? Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. It's not the same peace of the world. It's the peace of God. Jesus said, I'm leaving with you. Let not your heart trouble, neither let it be afraid. All right. We've heard from Jesus. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. No matter what we have to face, don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. The peace of God. The peace of God. We see in the Old Testament, the children of Israel weren't familiar with the peace of God yet. They were just coming out from captivity. And it's understandable that they would be uh, they had this terror and be upset. But talking to us today, we can take from an example and move forward. Yes, we might have a moment of terror. Yes, we might uh, have a moment of fear. But let's not forget who we are and whose we are. Let's remember, we had the peace of God. We had the peace of God that was left for us. We're operating in the Holy Spirit. We're operating with the very spirit and anointing of God. So the peace of God, which the King James Version says, will pass all understanding. The new King James, which surpasses all understanding, will do what? Guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Thanks.
Let us let the peace of God continue to reign in our lives. Reign meaning rule. Hmm? Reign meaning rule. Let it, let it, let it, let it, let us rule our life. And interesting thing about the word reign, it means rule, but also it can mean uh, let it have control. Like we have the rain that you put in a horse to guide the horse and control the horse to keep it from getting out of order. So that that word rain can be looked at two ways. Not only the rain, the rule in our lives, but also to keep us in the subjection. So we don't get so far afield, so far afraid that we just are out of it, out of control. Let it rain, hold us in place, keep us in check, and also rule in our lives so we can stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. Yes, the children of Israel will always have some issues we see going forward. There'll always be something going on in their lives, always something going on. We can learn from their examples. I don't condemn them. I said, let me learn from them. You know, a wise man, wise woman, wise anybody is able to learn from experiences. And I'll, I'll drop this point before I let you go. If you're very wise, I like to say that I can learn from your experience. You know, if I see someone burn their hand uh, by touching a hot stove, I will know that Hey, stove's hot. I don't need to experience that. That's wisdom. I said, well, I had to perceive myself. Let me touch the stove. No, 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 no. This fella here, Michael Bodie, Pastor Bodie, just, I will see. If you burnt your hand touching that stove, I don't need to touch it. I said, well, thank you for that lesson. I'll learn from that. I, I, I'm sorry for you, you know, and, and I can live. But a lot of people think they have to experience things for themselves. Saints, I want to tell you, you can also learn from experiences for others. Watch, take note. Remember recently I talked about they had took note that those Peter and uh, uh, John and them had been with Jesus? They took note. Why? They saw evidence. They were repeating the things that Jesus told them. They were operating in the manner Jesus had taught them. So take note. I can take note from your experiences other experiences and say, well, that's not a good thing to do. I don't have to experience that for myself. I can learn that, yeah, that's a bad thing, but that's a good thing. All right? And so I like to say that's wisdom. Wisdom. Yes. Well, another way I see wisdom is the effective application of knowledge. So I can effectively apply knowledge that I gained from your situation so I don't have to go through that to my detriment. Amen. God bless you, saints. May heaven smile upon you. Look forward to seeing you next week. And we see that this is coming into the season. Uh, I believe next is the first Sunday of December. And we're coming to our Christmas season. And we know Jesus is the reason for the season. Not all the uh, commercialism. We know what happens. But make sure that you're operating in faith. Remember who you are and whose you are. And no matter what situation we have to face tomorrow or any day, Psalm says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Jesus lives. He also lives in our lives. He lives in us and he's with us. God bless all of you. Look forward to seeing you next week at this time. Praise God. Uh, Minister Ham, I give you the honor Take us home today. God bless you. Dear Father God, we just thank you for always, always being with us, Father God. Yes, You Lord. are such an awesome God, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for your awesomeness. And Father God, you said that um, uh, that you're always with us. And Father God, so we ask that you bless us and you keep us and that you allow your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And Lord, we ask that um, you lift up your countenance upon us and that you grant us peace. Peace yes. and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before I've seen you move. I've seen you move.